Good afternoon. This is Weather United with a tropical update on Tropical Storm Ian. As always, my thoughts in this video are mine alone. Please consult the National Hurricane Center for the latest information for where you're at. Taking a look at the latest visible satellite imagery and we can see that Tropical Storm Ian has substantially improved from this morning from that of a sheared cyclone to that now of a more better symmetrical looking organized cyclone as we can see here with some banding features that are beginning to increase in association with Ian with its outflow pattern that is now becoming more established in all quadrants of the system. As you can see here by the feathery white cirrus expanding in all quadrants and this indicates that the shear over Ian now is nearly at zero knots. So we're not talking a whole lot of shear at all on Ian as of this afternoon with the low level center that could be underneath a lot of this deep convection Probably best estimate is somewhere over here as we do have uh, winds out of the south on this quadrant of the system. We have winds wrapping down out of the north around it. However, it is very hard to see if this is even coming in out of the west here on the southern side of the system with the low level cloud filaments. But nevertheless, this remains a fairly intense looking system that would argue enough that this is going to be able to rapidly intensify in the next 24 hours as soon as an inner core structure is able to get established. Once again, this is a look at the latest shear vectors from the University of Wisconsin over Tropical Storm Ian in the Caribbean. And we can see that the conditions, again, like we just said, are very favorable with all this green color indicating very favorable upper level winds with very little to no shear that is over Tropical Storm Ian right now. And it, it may be that the shear vectors are even down to zero knots over Ethan, or not over Ethan, over um, over Ian, there we go, correcting myself with the center that is likely right over here. So the shear is very light right now as of this afternoon. However, latest recon data does not indicate that this is a very well definitive circulation by any means. It is very elongated, likely recovering from the shear from this morning and from yesterday. As you can see here, we got southwesterly winds here on the southeastern side. We might even have a couple of vort maxes kind of going around a common center. We have a vort max over here. We may have another vort max over here. So this is very highly uncertain exactly which center is the strongest right now. But one could argue that overall, we have this wave envelope that looks something like this with the broad circulation that is going to likely soon control tracked into a more compact inner core probably by tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon. The latest National Hurricane Center now calls this to become a hurricane by Monday morning near the Cayman Islands into a major hurricane clipping the western portion of Cuba now. So we're looking at just in a couple of days at a major hurricane approaching Cuba. So in about two and a half to three days. And then, of course, a very powerful major hurricane over the southeastern Gulf of Mexico on the approach here to Florida. So it looks like now, since the models have trended further west, it looks like a less likely chance of this hitting Miami is slowly decreasing. But please do not take my word for it because this could trend still further east with time. We just don't know if that's going to happen yet. But as it stands right now, the cone of uncertainty here is near 200 miles across, literally clipping portions of southeastern tip of Alabama over here with Florida and Lake Okeechobee over southern Florida. So that is a huge, huge model guidance spread of the cone of uncertainty from the National Hurricane Center. Latest maximum winds, 45 miles an hour, and movement is towards the west at 16 miles an hour. Now, looking at the most likely arrival time of tropical storm force winds is as follows. This could be impacting the Cayman Islands with tropical storm force winds arriving in that area as early as Monday morning, getting close to Jamaica, in fact, as early as Sunday night if the center gets close enough to that area, but approaching Cuba with tropical storm force winds by Monday night, and then by Tuesday morning into the southeastern Gulf of Mexico, then approaching the northeastern extreme Gulf of Mexico by Wednesday morning and by Wednesday night, approaching Tampa, Florida, possibly Sarasota, Florida, Tallahassee, Florida, the Big Bend of Florida, 
Ocala, Florida could be under the gun here with some pretty substantial impacts with tropical storm force winds or if not major hurricane force wind impacts. We all know hurricane force wind speed probabilities have also increased in response to this with a 40 to 50 percent chance of hurricane force winds of near major intensity perhaps over the western tip of Cuba. Those chances will be increasing in days to come over Tampa, Sarasota, Tallahassee as well as Ocala, Florida in the coming days. So make sure you follow the National Hurricane Center very closely for the latest information for where you're at in regards to this because the chances again will be going up very quickly as this undergoes rapid intensification as all of the models explicitly show in this video that I'm about to show you. All right, so big time concerns here for Western Cuba, at least in the short term, and then of course in Florida thereafter. When we take a look at the latest key messages on Tropical Storm Ian, there's a lot to read everybody. I am not going to read everything or else you all will tune out and you will get bored. So I'm going to have you all pause this portion of the video if you can and then read this for yourself or simply skip this part of the video and let's take a look at those models in just a second. But for more information, please go to hurricanes.gov for more information on these products because this is very important and very critical to actually read, okay? Very important. Please do not ignore anything please listen to the National Hurricane Center of what they tell you because we have a Category 4 on our hands now. In 72 hours, in three days, the National Hurricane Center explicitly shows that winds could increase to 130 miles an hour. This is up 10 miles an hour from their morning advisory this morning from the NHC and then 130 miles an hour by day four also. So within this time frame, it would not be surprising to see this even stronger than what the NHC actually explicitly shows because they're pretty conservative. Not that I am hyping this up, but I mean, that's a big jump in intensity, don't you think? So when we take a look at the latest global forecasting system that explicitly now shows a major hurricane in about two or three days has trended further west, we can see this in 24 hours on the global forecasting system. 996 millibars by Sunday morning. As this gets closer and closer to the Cayman Islands, it will rapidly intensify into a powerful Category 1, maybe a Category 2 hurricane by Monday morning. That's a big drop in pressure, by the way, of over 24 millibars in a 24-hour period. And again, this is probably a little generous given the fact that the hurricane models even show faster rate of intensification. And maybe the GFS is trying to latch onto that. So by the time we go into 60 hours, down to 955 millibars. That's another almost 20 millibar drop in pressure in about 12 hours. That is very substantial. And then by 72 hours, it's down to 939 millibars approaching Western Cuba by Tuesday morning, September the 27th, okay? I don't think it's gonna be this strong. Please, GFS, be wrong on this because this is explosively intensifying at a uncontrolled rapid rate if this actually occurs, okay? Please pray that the GFS model is actually wrong and it's probably doing its little convective bias like craziness because, wow, 939 millibars, that would be a Category 4 hurricane. That's a sure bet on this forecast. And then by the time we go into Day 4, down to 927 millibars? I mean, wow, that is very strong, and it's definitely further uh, west. If we look at the previous model runs when these actually load, the, um, the website's running a little low on Tropical Tidbits. I hope Tropical Tidbits fixes this um, with the high traffic volume that everyone's aiming at this website right now. But we can see, if we go back uh, just at a few model runs, we can see with what is all... I'm showing what the GFS has trended and look at it's been trending further west. This is literally um, more than five model runs ago, literally at day five, the same time frame for Wednesday morning. And we can see already within a day model time, thing has actually trended 
pretty far west right now than what it was like yesterday, which is unfortunate because that means the hurricane has a better chance of intensifying more. It has more water time. It has more favorable conditions to work with. So by Friday morning, it makes its way on shore of Pensacola, Panama City Beach, Florida by Friday, September the 30th as a lower grade hurricane. But again, don't take the shear into consideration here because if this hurricane is able to really be strong enough and outlie the GFS model, it is possible hurricanes are known to shunt away the deep layer shear and the dry air. And this could be much stronger than what the GFS model shows. But again, I'm going to follow with what the GFS model is showing because at the end of the day on Weather United here, for you to watch with the work that I do, I don't like to hype up stuff. That's the thing I do not like. I learned the hard way on the previous channel. So looking at the European model, this is a much more conservative model, but too conservative, you are probably telling me in this video. So in 48 hours, we can see the system is not intensifying hardly at all at 998 millibars near the Cayman Islands, and then intensifying to 987 millibars in about three days. This would barely be a hurricane, if not probably a tropical storm on the European model. I mean, what the heck, European? You, are you not seeing this rapidly intensifying at all? And then, of course, it rapidly intensifies on the approach to Florida by day four and day five at a 953 millibar powerful hurricane nearing major intensity, or might even argue that could be at 115 or major hurricane intensity of a category three system and then weakening as it does so as it kind of uh, crawls up the florida coast of tampa um ocala and into tallahassee florida as some very heavy rainfall strong winds storm surge there will be substantial impacts i don't want to get too deep into the impact magnitude but i'll tell you what it's looking either not bad at all because the system's far enough west or it's looking completely catastrophic if the system gets dangerously close to the Florida coast eventually. It's going to hit Florida either way, I think. That's the sure bet here. But where in Florida is to be announced? Right now, we have a pretty good ballpark idea that it's going to hit somewhere probably in this area of Florida with the GFS model being pretty far over to the left, but we'll see if the European model does the same thing and trends this further west. A G4 aircraft Gulfstream upper level radio sound drop sound mission will be conducted this evening to better feed better data and equations into these global models to better resolve the errors and um, inconsistencies that we have been dealing with thus far. So here is the latest intensity forecast from the RAL um, tropical guidance project that I like to look at, the spaghetti plot we call it, and my intensity forecast has been raised from the previous one and is now explicitly calling for a major hurricane, and I'm going to draw this line for you all so you all can see this. I am now calling for this to become a 120 mile an hour hurricane, 10 mile an hour winds underneath the National Hurricane Center, and I call for rapid weakening in about five days on the approach to the Florida coast potentially in days to come. So the black line is my intensity forecast. As you all know, it is slightly below most of the consensus models of the intensity guidance. And the LGM and the COTI model get this very close to category five intensity in about three to five days. The track forecast has also been nudged westward is why the NHC has done the same thing. We can see a lot of the spaghetti plots now keep this just off the coast perhaps off the west of Cuba, the tip, the little finger we call it of Cuba, and you can see a lot of the spaghetti plots really tightly clustered right off the coast there, but pretty somewhat divergent here by day four and day five because exactly where and when this rapidly intensifies will be key metrics of exactly who and where and when this will impact. But either way right now, we have a pretty good understanding that this will miss or might miss Cuba altogether, but not out of the ballpark just yet. The Cayman Islands look to be safe from the eye as well as Jamaica looks to not get directly impacted no longer with this system which is good blessing news that we like to hear about because otherwise this would be a huge huge monster or a big enemy to a lot of people that live on these islands but western Cuba 
or portions here of easternmost of the Yucatan could still be in danger. And this could get even further west. So areas like the Yucatan Peninsula need to be watching this very carefully. It's also a good idea that I do a very quick update on Super Typhoon Nauru as it heads towards the Philippine Islands here. Now a powerful Category 4 with 155 mile an hour winds. And winds are expected to hit possibly 160 to near 165 miles an hour in the uh, Philippine Islands here in the next day or so as a catastrophic violent typhoon here, as you all can see. Very intense pinhole eye surrounded by cloud tops colder than negative 80 degrees Celsius. So a very compact, intense, violent typhoon right now going on in the Western Pacific near the Philippine Islands. If you found this weather information very helpful, make sure you smash the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any of my future updates. But anyways, I will see you in the next one. Peace.